Good afternoon and welcome to the Straight Talking Podcast. Um, this afternoon's guest is Jiu Jitsu uh, Purple Belt, uh, Danny Hall, under uh, Coach Owen Roddy at SBG Charlestown. And Danny is also in his past in MMA fighter. Yeah. Um, very welcome, Danny. Thanks for having me, John. It's good to be here. No worries, no worries. So, how many MMA fights did you have? So, I would have fought MMA. I think I've had uh, my record is five and two. So, okay. I've, had, I've had seven seven fights, uh, five wins, two 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 defeats, nice. uh, and then MMA was fun. Uh, I think MMA is the the ultimate form of combat competition. Like you get the melting pot of jiu jitsu, melting pot of boxing, melting pot of, of Thai, where it's the king. But I love jiu jitsu, yeah. so I've gone fully into the into the to, to the cult of Danaher, and uh, it's uh, no it's worries. it's uh, it's fun. It's it's given me it's given me a great passion for life, of what to oh. do, and, and you know, messing with the best people doing it. So you can go wrong. Whatever. Danny's just had to be downstairs beating the shit out of me youngfla <laughs> on the mats, and they did a bit of a bit of training before the podcast, so it's all good. If that's what beating the shit out of Max <laughs> is, man, I want to see when he gets <laughs> that kid's a killer. Sixteen, he's he's a bright, bright future. Good stuff, good stuff. So I suppose myself and Danny have been talking back and forth. Um, over myself and Danny talk back and forth over all topics and we have some good good debates we don't agree with each other all the time and I suppose that kind of ingredient in today's present climate of debate and dialogue and back and forth in the world of social media seems to be fucking in short demand oh it's mental it's like if you it's people have gone to the thing where they won't have anyone around who's not of their mindset yeah. so it's, it's crazy like me and you we've agreed on some things and then yeah. we we disagree and yeah. we've but because we're adults yeah there's none of this unfollow me or blocked <laughs> or any of this childish stuff like it's like you yeah. w- what you want is you 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 want your ideas challenged yes you, you you want them and that way if your ideas it's it's like i compare stuff like that say to jiu-jitsu so for example let's say me and you're on the mat like i go john look at this new technique i've got here i've got we'll put that you'll put that through the test of like yes. let's see if this holds up let's see if this argument is good and if it's a solid argument then you're gonna you're gonna get a right it's good let's keep it or mm, it's not actually a great argument is it yeah and that's where it goes whereas some people will be like if you tell them that technique don't work they don't like to hear that yes they don't like to hear that yeah yeah you yeah know? and that's yeah. how we see the similarities between jiu-jitsu and the current woke movement yeah of, yeah of, of some of these people i suppose and it kind of got brought to my attention i suppose five six years ago with this kind of mindset and and people i'm sure they see me sharing stuff on social media and they're saying what the fuck are you now like i spend most summers in New York. A lot of Yvonne's family in New York are involved in the NYPD. We have friends that work in the NYPD. So, and we have friends everywhere. And Jiu Jitsu, you come across like all creeds, colors, races. My opinion on it is like, no one gives a fuck. Mm-hmm. No one gives a fuck. But I suppose that's my aspect. I've been in these countries I see how it works. Um, is there racism within like countries? Yeah, there's, there's small pockets, but I think it's been absolutely blown out of proportion. That's my opinion. And blown out of proportion. Some people can say, oh, how can you say that? It's like you get arseholes, whether they're Chinese, Irish, English, Scottish, American, African American, Irish American, you get assholes everywhere. I don't believe, and this is my thought in human nature, that there's somebody strapping on a uniform going, do you know what? I'm going to go out today and beat the shit out of some pink guy. I don't think that. No, I would it's, agree with you. It's the consequences of, of the actions that lead to, you know, um, that's my opinion on it. You, you, you may get a different take on it. Do you know what I mean? But that's my opinion. But this woke generation, um, this social justice warrior type, that is 
introducing this PC climate that you can't say or do or suggest or share anything. Where, what, like, where did this come out of, like? Um, I've, uh, it's it's crazy. It, I don't know where this political. It seems to have started, or at least come heavily from college campuses. Yeah. That that from well, I could be wrong on that, but from what I've seen, that seems to be um, it seems to be heavily where it's coming from. And for example, I was only watching a video the other day uh, uh, on a college campus where there's a guy. I would if I was to describe the guy, I'd describe him as just a hippie. You know what I mean? He was kind of like raggy clothes. Thing. I think his hair, hair might have been dreadlocks or something like that. But he's walking down. And he's not bothering no one, and he's grabbed by this black woman. And she starts going mad at him, saying, your uh, culture appropriation, that's that's my culture's hairstyle you're, you're wearing. And he's like, he, he fully is like, what? What's going on here? But she keeps going at him. And he's just trying to be calm and walk away, but she won't let him. She keeps pulling him back. And he comes out and he goes, this this was in Egypt before it was in your your, your yeah. culture. And she's doing And then when she turns around and she's saying that she got recorded doing all that, she she's not happy. I don't, this, this, what's, what's wrong with having a hairstyle? Yeah. You know what I mean? The cultural appropriation of we're all humans. Yeah. So I don't I don't get where all this but this like the political correctness movement now that's coming out where it's gone to the point of like uh so one of the guys I usually admire, Jordan Peterson, who who came to fame because his thing had nothing to do he's labelled wrongly as like transphobe and stuff like this. His his whole thing was com- government compelled speech. So they were trying to bit bring in a bill in Canada where you have to address a person a certain way and when and what people seem to miss when he's interviewed from what I have seen could be wrong but he, he'd he say stuff like you know I've got no issue with like you know you ask me to call you something we can have a conversation about that that's like a nickname but government's telling me what I have to say yeah. you know that's that's the thing but it just it seems to be like with everything it just gets worse and worse and worse in terms of like the woke generation the, the, the they're afraid to have ideas challenged yeah. they go to colleges like people get people come into colleges to give debates and give speeches and they are completely trying to shut them down, get them banned so you can't give opposing views to what, what they what they're in. To me that's that's a that's a crazy way to go. That's yeah. a crazy way to go because no dialogue is gonna happen. You don't have opposing views. So you don't go, hmm, maybe I'm wrong, maybe he's right. No, he's wrong, maybe I'm right. And you just end up with like what's going on now, where people mm-hmm. are literally like rioting and destroying everything it's like it's just constantly been building and then yeah. this is what set it off yeah but I, I also I I listened to Jordan Peterson and what he how he destroyed some feminists on the gender pay gap and I I do agree with him mm-hmm. on the gender pay gap and it gets like even my own wife gets freaked out when I say it it's, it's like the boogeyman the gender pay gap, it's the boogeyman. It doesn't really exist. And I'm sure we're gonna have viewers going, what do you mean it doesn't exist? It's like, when you break down, Sweden tried to introduce mandatory Mm 50-50. So at the moment in Ireland, if you want to be a primary school teacher, 85% of primary school teachers in Ireland are female. If you look at nursing, it's similar figures into nursing. If you look at dangerous jobs, which are paid more, yep. men who light matches towards themselves and bring sharp knives towards themselves because we're naturally drawn a bit to danger, take them jobs, which gets paid more. So if you think, like at the moment, I've come across female electricians, they get the exact same money as I get. Do you know what I mean? If they fall pregnant, they get paid exactly what they should be paid. But it it seems to be a great rallying call for this PC social justice warrior type. You just throw something out there with no data to back it up. That's my opinion on it. Do you know what I mean? And I think it's it's kind of, I'm looking at the data and stuff, I think it's true, you know. Um, But your opinions then, we've covering a bit here but what are your opinions on the parade or protest or the instagram fest that was the black lives matter parade around dublin right well first of all what happened to george floyd was 
horrendous. No, and I don't horrific. Know, I horrific. don't know any person who has defended that public execution. It was fucking horrific. That, that, horrific. That was horrific. What I don't get, or what, I, or what I'm not a fan of, is I'm not a fan of virtue signaling. Yeah. Right, because it accomplishes nothing. And all you want to do with virtue signaling, I know I'm sure the people that are doing it in their hearts, there are people that are like, this is, we have to stop this, and they're trying to do what they can. But changing your profile, these people that changed the profile picture to a black circle for him, the same people that say thoughts and prayers, the same people that when there was the horrific shooting in France changed their, their Facebook uh, picture to, with the French flag filter over it. You're just trying to send out. Look at me. I'm not an evil person. You want. You're trying to get likes off people. You're trying. You don't do that to actually help. And especially given the current situation that's going on in the world with the 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 coronavirus and uh, all the 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 lockdown measures that people have been abiding by. To run a mar- how many was in it? Was, was it ten thousand? Five thousand. Five thousand. Think, Five thousand yeah. that was in there in in thing. First of all, marching through Dublin on a night of had very little issue with that if they were marching through yeah. on a normal situation okay you want to show solidarity that's totally fine but when you were going out of your way for something that won't it's not actually going to change Anne. It, it, there's no cop in America that's you know or, or, or anyone in America that's like looking there's 5,000 Irish people out on the street here we better you know I, I can't see that changing anything and in the middle of a virus outbreak where the whole thing is like we've got to be distant from each other we've got to lock down anyone to me who who died of coronavirus or to any nurses who put themselves on the, the front line. Like, I remember reading in the paper recently, there was a nurse who contracted corona and hadn't seen her child for two months. Yeah. Every person that done that, while well, they were virtue signaling and just insulted the work mm-hmm. that woman done. You, you, you just, the whole, whole thing was keeping the virus down. And you get these people that are out, out marching. Their intentions, are, their good intentions, they're not doing anything wrong. But they're not doing anything to alleviate the problem really either. They just want to send, look at me, I'm good. And I, I suppose there's certain people online that will manipulate and try and edit and cut what we say down. Mm-hmm. Like, that was horrific what happened to George. Horrific, horrific. I don't know anyone who said opposite. And and I I, I think also, with, with, like, there's so many other videos of white people getting attacked and the white people getting attacked by black people I don't think that's racism what I think is it's just fucking violent arseholes do you know what I mean Mm -hmm. who aren't probably good people anyway do you know what I mean black, white, green but I, I think it's after creating a racial divide which I hope mends and doesn't continue but with regard to also like drawing your lines in the sand, the way people, we, we need a bit of love and harmony rather than this, oh, look at this and look at this and look at this and look at this. But going forward, where where do you think that this, do you think this political correctness is going to get worse? Or is it going to, are people going to cop on? Or do you think people like me and you and other people out there that look at this, what the, how do we stop this virtue signaling and this kind of people just following the herd mentality? Do you think this is the future, the way it's going to be? Um, the, the, it's, a, it's, a tricky, it's a tricky one to even try guess how this is, is going to play out in the long term. One of the, so I'd be, one of the comedians I, 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 I had watched before, his name is Jonathan Poy, and I've, he went on a, he's got a great video on YouTube, I think it's called Oppression Obsession, yeah. right? And the video's about set, and he basically goes off on anyone who virtue signals. Like, so for example, one of the things he mentions, he goes, in order for, for gay rights was one of the things he goes on, he goes, Co- uh, Costa change, well not Costa, sorry, uh, a coffee company would change their, uh, their cups to rainbow flags. Yeah. And he goes, you politicise and copy this is doing nothing for the, the movement go to Russia where they're oppressed and and, yeah. and and you know help them I'll be fully on board with yeah. that but stop politicising coffees stop yeah. politicising stuff like that and the problem he says as well with, with, with what seems to be the, the political correct which is the far left in America uh, they're pushing people that are on the centre away Yes. So they're the best recruiters I think for the for the opposite side yeah, you yeah. know so for anyone who's central who's like 
case by case basis like the more they see stuff like this coming out where people are getting fired from jobs from a joke that would have been acceptable 20 years ago yes you know what i mean that's going to push people further like further to the to, to the other side and you've got guys like joe rogan and and sam harris coming out saying calls from the calls from the left for violence is extremely disturbing to them yeah, yeah, because yeah. they grew up with the left being like the peaceful kind of yeah yeah you know protesters and mm. now it's almost done a complete yeah. a complete u-turn but with the power that social media seems to hold yeah, uh, I don't know with the like one, like for example, your man, um, I think it's John Boyega, with the the Star Wars guy, yes, uh, screaming that he might not have a job. He was at one of the the riot or the protests in in London, yeah, and he was he was saying getting on the mic for Black Lives Matter, and he was screaming uh, aggressively how he might not have a job after this, but he didn't care. But he was getting, there's nobody that's going to fire you for, for what you yeah, do. Yeah. You know what I mean? You're, you're very, like, that's, that's... You're in Hollywood. You're They're in left. Hollywood. That, <laughs> yeah, that, exactly. It's crazy to me, but people just want to shout out and make themselves look good. And I think the, the best thing I've heard so far on it is what you said, which is that all these celebrities, salespeople. Yeah. And they're selling their brand. Yeah. So they want to show that their name is a good name without, without doing anything. I, I I think the pendulum tends to swing side to side on political movements, and it's kind of been pushed really far into the uh, political correctness. That eventually, I think it will swing back the opposite, yeah. and uh, you know, it's it's not going to be good. W once it goes to either wing, it's it's bad. I think it's bad, and you go to either right or left into the far sides. And I I think it's it's like, P Irish people kind of don't understand the political system in the US. And you hear people just drowning out of them. Oh, Trump's a racist. But Trump is the president. Mm -hmm. In New York, for instance, you have Bill de Blasio, who's the mayor. I don't like Bill de Blasio. He doesn't treat the NYPD well, hasn't got their backs, you know. Andrew Cuomo is the governor. They decide how the police force reacts in New York. For me, the fault of diluting all this type of stuff is on them because they've held the cops back. They haven't let them do their jobs of whatever allowed people peaceful protest. I'm all for protest. I'm all for people's rights. But with regard to burning and looting, that should have been stamped out quick smart. And it wasn't. Why? Because we're in an election year and they want to make Trump look bad. So... El Dirty Joe can get elected. That's what they're after. But, like, with regard to... I have a, had an issue with the protests around Dublin, the Black Lives Matter protests. And the issue I had was, um, looking at, I'd say, 70% of them were there for Instagram. 100%. 70%. Yeah. And I want to know, when Dean Scurry was organising the Apollo House or when homeless people were dying in the streets, or when our political system fucked us with the bank bailout and people were getting thrown out of their houses left, right and centre. Where were all these fucking virtue signalling Instagram shitbags when that was all going on? Do you know what I mean? Where were they then? But they want to be on Instagram to seem cool. See, that's not cool. Homeless people aren't cool or bank bailouts aren't cool. But that kind of ticking the boxes at the moment. I'm not a racist. I have black friends that follow me on Instagram. That's, that's whatever's it trending. banged of that. Do you know what I mean? That's what I thought of banged of anyway, you know? Like, do something for someone in your community. Mm -hmm. You know, that's what activism is. It's not being seen at a place and kind of ticking the boxes and hashtag thoughts and prayers. You know, that's that's my my opinion on it, you know. But I suppose where we are now with regard to sport and this whole COVID thing and I suppose we're going to get off that. You'll talk about our sport of jiu-jitsu and MMA moving forward. Were you happy to hear that we're back training now, 20th of July? 
Oh, I was I was ecstatic to hear mm-hmm. that. I can't, like I really can't can't wait to to get back full training like normal. Um, mm-hmm. and for me personally, that's been my life for for the last nine years. You know what I mean? And I have met some of no, I have all the greatest people in my life that I've met have come either directly or indirectly because of the the gym that I'm in. You know what I mean? So I've either met people directly who have come into the gym, or I've met their friends through them indirectly and. It's it's been the, the the greatest thing ever. I can't wait for sport. Sport unifies so much. Mm. You know what I mean. Sport. When when sp- the, the great thing about sport, uh, especially anything that's kind of competition based, is everything. Nobody gives a fuck whether you're white, whether yeah. you're black, yeah. whether you're Asian, whether you're whatever. Yeah. It's all merit based. Yeah. You know what I mean. So that's that's one of the the great things, and that's what kind of brought one of the things that gutted me about one of the the protests. Uh, I can understand the. The the and this is in America. I think it was in California. Tent Planet, one of the the lot mm. of Tent Planets got destroyed, yeah. and I felt so bad because Long me, Beach that was yeah. that's one, and I felt good because well first of all, you've got whoever runs Tent Planet. Most likely he's a small business owner. He he funded that himself. I'd imagine he he probably employs people in that community, and for anyone that's been on the Jiu Jitsu mat. Man, it's one of the most welcoming places, you know, you can be in. Nobody cares who walks through the door what your culture is. Nobody cares who walks through the door what your race is or what, you know what I mean? Everyone is pretty much welcome on the mats. And to see gyms like that getting destroyed is is, is horrendous. But I, I really, like, once this sport comes back, I am, uh, I think life is going to get a lot better for a lot of people because for them, that, that helps their mental health out. You yeah. know what I mean? Like that's if that's their passion and they get a great buzz out of that, and then that's been taken off them. I'd say from from what I've seen on Instagram, every person that does jujitsu, just they just seem to explode with happiness at the thought of it coming from the tenth of August to the twentieth of yeah, July. Yeah. You know what I mean? So that's that's how important that sport is to is to people. Yeah. Like it was the first time in a long time I'd nearly seen my social media feed filled with some form of positivity. Yeah. Or, or happiness, you know. So I personally cannot wait to get back and see everyone again. And like a jiu-jitsu mat, it's like a graveyard. Nobody gives a fuck. No. Nobody gives a fuck. It's like if he's Chinese and he taps me, I want to fucking beat his ass the next round. Yeah. If he's fucking Moldovan and he beats me ass, I'm gonna fucking smash him the next round. If, if he's, he's 16. black, if he's green, if he's whatever. Right, mate, you caught me with a heel hook. You're not getting near me fucking legs this next round. Like, I suppose that's the beauty of sport. Mm -hmm. And I suppose maybe how we're in this situation at the moment with all these social justice warriors, maybe it's because they never competed in sport or when they came through school, they got no medals and a little diploma for finishing 16th. That's what led us to this, you know, but... um, I suppose getting back to you, we're gonna get dragged back into Black Lives Matter. Like, does nobody, like, the Black Lives Matter, I thought that one in Dublin was a sham and Instagrammable. The ones in New York, the ones in LA, I support the right to protest, 100%, oh, yeah, 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 100%. Yeah. But it, it's kind of becoming fashionable. That's the issue I have. And not fashionable, like, Instagrammable. The people that are Instagramming, like, there's a few p- DJs and producers of hip hop that, like, I'm looking at them, fanning flames of hatred and violence and partition. I still like their shit, though. You oh, know, yeah, not I'm not going to be one of these fucking soy boys that's going, unfollow, oh my God, you know. Um, I really like their shit, you know. And even, like, I, I was telling you earlier on, like, I fucking love hip-hop music. I love fucking... The, m- one of the best meals I ever had in my life was up on 142nd Street in New York in this fucking a Jamaican restaurant. I think me and Max were the only white people in the fucking whole 10 blocks of the place. But it was gorgeous. And for people to, to separate along racial lines, I, I don't think it's a thing. Like, I... We're all humans. Nobody gives a fuck. Yeah, yeah. Nobody cares. Is there violence in the NYPD or do they react violently? Fucking right they do. And the LAPD, fucking right they do. But when you look at the stats of the data, the hard data, I was looking at some stats from the Wall Street Journal. It's like, mate, 
the police have more to fear from getting murdered than vice versa. You know, they've more to fear. But, like, again, George Floyd being murdered, that guy that done it needs to be up on a murder charge. You know, yeah, he, yeah. He, he, that was, like, there's no hiding that or denying what took place there. That's murder. But what's interesting is as well, like I think nearly weren't all the cops a different race that were involved. Yeah, in yeah, yeah. All the cops like, but were it, but it was it was made yeah. out to be like white versus black. Yeah, which is mental. And but I feel that there's white social justice warrior, them Yaley type, Californian type, uh, social justice. They're making the issue of that. Like I was on a bus a few years ago, representing the NYPD in a running race and fucking all colours of the rainbow nobody gives a fuck we're all competing let's do this what well, the NYPD and the New York Marathon are compete against the, the fire department so it's like let's fucking kick the fire department's ass today you know what I mean everyone out no one gives a fuck what colour yeah, you are yeah that was just simple competition like yeah competition. no one gives a fuck it's a, it's a, no one gives a fuck yeah, you know it's a, it's a great thing but I, I think like some of the stuff I, uh, you said there a few minutes ago, like the likes of the guys who came through school and sucked that sport yes. and ended up needing participation medals to nail yeah. it. It's what happens is you've people that kind of get brought up under that mentality that it doesn't, it's uh, the like giving participation medals out, stuff like this, or like not like giving anyone who lost a reward. Now, you've got to have some form of uh, measure of uh, merit where yeah. it can be measured, like you know, and that's what four second and third kind of, and if you fell below that. You, f- you fell below it but that's just life like you know that's some people I sucked at sport for years in school like I was really really bad at it uh, but I'm totally opposed to the idea of you know participation medals like you need to be building tough humans yeah. mentally tough humans and I think the mind is like it, once you kind of get if you kind of get used to losing you realise that it's not the end of the world it's it's one of the best things you can, you, you can realise because you'll try more then Whereas if you come from the kind of needing something to show that you just at least turned up, yeah, it, it, it's a very, I think it's a very dangerous game to be playing with with with, with people, especially because they, be, them children, grow up to be entitled adults. Yes, you know I'm entitled to a medal because I'm here. Yeah, I'm, yeah. I'm entitled to this, and then they grow and they take that that mentality with them into the things. It's it's like some like what you were saying about some of the like those people in Yale. Were, were protesting saying they identify with the oppressed and I was like if you, if you live in North America you're in like the top 1% of people who ever lived yeah. if you're in Yale you're in the top 1% of the top 1% yeah. how can you identify with yeah. the with the oppressed like, you, 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 it, 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 I don't I don't get you just want to send virtue signaling yeah. that's exactly what it just comes back to you, you're not actually doing that you're just trying to show and sell yourself Yeah. you know and I think it's I, I don't know the, the politically correct social justice warrior movement is, is, is crazy like when you look back man it was maybe 70 or 80 years ago yesterday was D-Day yeah. the anniversary of that can you imagine like being an 18 or 19 year old on that boat yeah. getting ready to and you're coming up to to uh, to, to fortified high Omaha uh, Beach down obvious go boys oh man that's that's crazy 90% of them not even making it out of fucking boat and the crazy I was watching uh, uh, Jocko Jocko broke yeah. that the, the, the private Saving Private Ryan scene down he talks about this and he was like he goes this scene is look, does look pretty accurate to how, how stuff yeah. goes he goes and what happened he goes the actual hard part about this is not only are you pulling up to a position where your enemies are in like say high ground and they're fortified and yes. with, with LMGs he goes your natural instinct is going to be to cover and hide. He goes, that's the worst thing. You, you've got it. You have to move because yes. if you stay there, you're getting gunned down. Yeah. And these were 18 and 19 year olds that just got on with it and got pushed through and done what they, they had to do. And now you're getting people that the moment you disagree with them, they're having breakdowns. Yeah. You know, I don't know what happened to the to the human's ability to be mentally tough. I think life has gotten so easy now that, you know, they don't know what adversity is. Yeah. You know, I think that's... Uh, that's a huge part of, of, of some of the, the, the problems that people have. But uh, it's a it's a crazy situation. That's... I was looking at a video online and this fucking kid was getting arrested that was protesting something. Uh, this white, you know, she was about 18, 19, and she was getting arrested because she wouldn't move or doing something. And uh, 
her friends who were fellow social justice warriors were like because she was getting arrested were like you're a veteran now it's like what I is like it's like she was a veteran of the movement and I'm like fucking yes it was D-Day here's this absolute flu ball getting arrested and somehow she thinks like she's a veteran of some fucking crusade or movement now you're just some douchebag that's getting in the way helping your community do something for the oppressed in your community Mm -hmm. and actually try and change someone's life or help someone from the better rather than just being a flute bag and getting in the way that's my opinion you know no I would fully agree with that uh, you just you just getting people that want the virtue signal that they're, they're, they're better than everyone or that they're, they're, they're not part of the product you're not helping it hmm. like there's nothing really being helped by it. people change the, the photo for a day and then life went back to normal the next day yes. it's like they forgot about it yeah. it's it's I don't I, I don't understand the 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 point of what they're doing like I, I, I obviously I understand you know the the actual virtue of it of of what they're trying to convey but anyone with a brain knows what they're doing yeah. they that they, they're literally trying to sell their brand to become marketable in in, in some way shape or form the celebrities are selling stuff on Instagram they know nothing about going into uh, a restaurant on 142nd Street getting boy to eat mixing up at the Apollo they know nothing of that type they're holed up in their million pound houses and they're just trying to sell oh yeah I'll raise a right hand I, we're oppressed I, I feel you blah 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 it's like crocodile tears it's, exa- it's yeah. like do something oh yeah we're donating to the cause it's the yeah you're getting people that have borne people's businesses down um, out free or it's do something that you can change actually change something and we're not just shitting as we said black lives matter so I, I wholeheartedly agree with them being able to protest what I don't agree with is a number of the restaurants that I will go into in New York or coffee shops or I fucking love New York are no longer there they're no longer there they've been destroyed or people out of work to fucking ages just wanting a new pair of Nikes or to rob something that's you know both of all races shit bags just breaking in and stealing stuff you know like what well, from I can under, like I've only been to New York once I've only ever been to America once and that was New York at the start of the year the, the climate over there is it's people who haven't been there they won't get it if you live in Ireland you're not going to get that climate from what you see. You you won't fully understand it. You get you get snippets of it on the media and stuff. But one of like, uh, one of the things I loved on Instagram was Henzo Gracie. Beautiful, fucking icon. He's a hero. Icon. When we were in right, so uh, he, uh, uh, when we were in New York, an immigrant into Brazilian New York, immigrant. Yeah, yeah, and he's what he f- literally fought his way up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But one of the things I loved this this is an example of real virtue or, or, or being a real kind human so when we were walking through Times Square and we sat in, uh, another guy Des we, that's, we, we crossed the street and we went, that's Henzo Gracie yeah. we met Henzo two nights previously he, talk, he took the Friday class and uh, Henzo remembered ah the Irish pure friendly with us Shook, we got photos with him while we were taking a photo with him uh, this, this beggar woman homeless person came up and she, 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 she went to him without hesitation Henzo put his stuff in and he, he was reaching in for, it, for yeah. his pocket. Now, there's a video that went viral of him, yes. given that he did not know that was being yeah, recorded. Yeah, yeah. There was no trying to get likes, trying to get yeah, trying yeah. to get anything like this. The, in fact, Des recorded them with the cameras on the, like, kind yeah. of on the sly yeah. uh, to show people what this fella is actually really like and uh, hugged her, kissed her after, g- gave the money off to her. You know, that's the thing. An owner of a jiu-jitsu academy. Anyone who's been in a jiu-jitsu academy, you've got whites, blacks, uh, Asians, you've got all races, all religions. And then you've got these anarch- anarchistic assholes yeah. turning up. They tried to smash his business up. Yeah. This is a house for every race and religion. Yeah, yeah. You know, you won't find more equality than in one of no, these no. gyms. No. And these, these assholes that haven't got a clue what they were smashing up tried to smash it up he was obviously there with it with yeah. a few of his crew and chased him off to save his business yeah. but like that I, I, or, uh, 
that that was great to see that he was like able to stand up. But he's not opposed to the to the to the movement. You're getting people then unfollowing him because he's not yeah. he's not you you didn't post what I wanted you to post to confirm to my worldview. Unfollow. Yeah. yeah. And then putting him on blast on your story like he's a criminal or like he's yeah. done. So it's what what's going on in the world? The, but but you see like Hanzo Gracie, an ethic of hard work. So really, if you look at it. If you've an ethic of hard work, you're going to get on. If you're lazy and expectant, do you know what? The world isn't going to give you a handout. I arrived in New York in 2001. Um, myself and Yvonne had done a bit of traveling around the world and we wanted to stay in New York. Um, and we were going to stay there. I was fucking broke. My second day in New York, I got a job. I was just walking into building sites, looking for a job. Um, I was an electrician at the time, and I walked into a building site, and he says, I, I need a job, can you give me a job? And they're like, yeah, uh, what are you? I was like, electrician. Nah, we don't need any electricians. I was like, I'll take anything. And they're like, um, do you ever carry bricks and mix cement? I can do that. I was getting paid $85 a day um, to do that. And I worked there for three weeks. Now, I knew is like your man said, them boys over there are getting paid a hundred dollars an hour. The Mexicans, you're untested, so you're only getting eighty five. I was like, grand, I don't give a bollocks. That is what New York is all about. If you want to put in the spade work, if you are hungry for the money, fucking New York will feed you. If you have a hand out looking for shit, do you know what? Life isn't like that. You know, eventually then, three weeks later, I did get picked up as an electrician. And I think in 2001, I was getting paid $1,200 a week from Monday to Friday. So New York is a country that if you want something or you want to work hard, you will get places. If you don't, do you know what? It's not going to happen for you. And life is like that. Sport is like that. That's my opinion. You know, I've lived that. So... I'm not some person in his realm in Ireland going, oh yeah, uh, me viewing from Instagram. I've been on the ground. I know what way it works there. Do you know what I mean? So that's what I think the real crux of this issue is. It's just people, virtual signalers on mommy and daddy's book or people who don't want to work hard and they're looking for something for free. Yeah, you know, yeah, that's the bottom line. I think that's my opinion. No, you know? I, I would I would agree with that. And I've got the like it. It seems to be like a generational gap with the previous generation. I think it's probably if you came from nothing, you're more prepared to walk your arse off to get somewhere. Whereas if you've kind of come up and you've had a cushy soft life and and, and stuff like this, you almost expect stuff handed to you. Yeah, you know, and that's and then that's that sense of entitlement where people start feeling that. That they uh, that they deserve this, and because they haven't faced any adversity or real adversity, yeah. you know, uh, they they tend to crack under the, the the slightest bit of pressure, and and you get mental mental situations like this. But like that's why I'm so opposed to uh, sport bringing in stuff like participation mm -hmm. medals. I don't, I don't agree with it in the slightest. I think the last thing you want to be doing is taking kids and teaching them that whether you win or not, you're getting the medal. You know yeah. where there's, there's there's a reward there. I'm like, it, it's I, you know, I think that's a risky strategy because when they grow up and they're like, oh, sure, just I'll get this anyway. Yes, I'll get this anyway. And then that's where and then and then when they grow up, and they realize that not the world's not like that. Yeah, uh, they can't handle it. It's like their illusions are almost shattered and they can't handle it. Yeah. You know, it's a it's a it's a crazy situation for 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 the people are bringing on themselves. I think. Like, I I don't get it like and like stuff like comedians being being banned from college campuses yeah. like you know people who like I don't like your jokes you're not coming here so where's free speech doesn't where's exist. free speech doesn't exist I defend even if like whoever you are right wing or ultra left wing gay lesbian I want to kill everyone right wing whatever I would defend your right to speech. Everyone has the right to free speech. But this has come in in the past few years. People are getting ran off campuses and it even happens in UCD and, and, and in Irish colleges as well. Like, boys, that's not free speech. That's radicalism. And I think the biggest thing we should fear today 
is that generation of banning people and shouting them down or protesting them. Even Gemma O'Doherty, don't agree with what she says, um, don't agree with her 100%, but she's a right to speak. She's a right to say what she wants. Couldn't, don't, haven't even got one little thing that I agree with, but we can't be shutting people down because we don't agree with them. No, you know what I mean? Because we don't agree with what they say. You know, there's a great saying that I used to I heard years ago. It was like I might not agree with what you're saying, but I'll defend to the debt your right to 100%. say. It. I, I'd, 100%. I, I'd, I'd agree fully with that. And like these guys in America and stuff like that, they call themselves Antifa, which is mm. like anti-fascist. Yeah, I'm like, did these guys turning up to protest free speech, shut down debates, shut that. That sounds pretty fascist yeah, to me. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Like you realize what you're doing. Yeah, you're, yeah. You're, you're the op- like you know, and it's as like you're not even. You, you're going and you're protesting college professors from speaking yeah. or other high intellectuals from speaking because they don't say what you want to say or what you want to hear, should I say. And it's just, it's a crazy, because what's happening is, is now you're getting all this turn around, your hate speech. Yes. You know, and you're getting hate speech. Around. It's like nobody has a definition on hate speech, mm. you know, because what is, what might offend you doesn't offend him. Yeah. So is that hate speech if it doesn't offend him, but it offends you? It, it's a, it's a, it's a scary future if but it keeps going every like time some something happens big like that around the world I heard an interview last week with some absolute flu bag campaigning for hate speech to be brought in laws on hate speech to be brought in into this country now if in this country if you're racially abusing somebody in my presence you're probably going to get receive a dig in the head off me. You know, that's where I stand. With regard to bringing in laws on hate speech, if only it was that easy, and them laws will be abused by politicians and manipulated by certain people for their own ends. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? If you agree to something like hate speech, Freedom of speech is now gone. Oh, censored now. It's now gone. Censored, yeah, it's yeah, now yeah. gone. You know, that's my opinion. Like on, I, I, on I, that. I've had multiple debates online with, with, with people in regards to free speech because I'm pro free speech. Yeah. And uh, uh, one of the things was like, I, I, I've, I've seen people, I don't know how, and they've tried to kind of insult me by saying, when I debate them in it, they kind of go, you seem bright, but you're just not getting it. Yeah. And one of the things that they say that to me on is like, and I'm like sitting there like, are you serious? Because I'll be reading their comments, it's like, I believe in free speech, but you can't say this, this, and this. I'm like, do you not see the contradiction? Yes. You, do you not see, you, if you believe in free speech, then all speech is free. The moment you say, I believe in free speech, but... Yeah. Well, now it's censored. Yeah. So it's not full free speech. Mm. And while you're free to say, the, the flip side of that is for people like me who believe in it, you're free to say what you like, but you're not free from them consequences. So yes. like the worst consequences you would. So like what you were just saying there, if you're racially abusing someone, yeah. well, the consequences, that is you're going to get a dig. Yeah. So there you go. Yeah. So, you know, and that's, that, that's what I would be in agreement with. But people who are like censoring speech, like speech forms ideas, you know, like that. And if, if certain things are being censored and people can't speak about it, it's, it's uh, it's it's not good because ideas don't form. People don't get to progress forward. People don't get to debate, which is one of the greatest things that people can mm. do. You have an open dialogue between between two people, then hopefully, like you know, the a better f- fusion is going to come out of that. Yeah, you know, but it's it's when you're getting people like and 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 debate. For instance, getting all putting on my jujitsu nerd hat at the moment. Mm-hmm. Imagine Dean Lister never made a comment to John Danaher. A little off the cuff comment to make him go, yeah. When well, John Danaher probably would have come up with that system anyway, but by a comment or by a sharing of ideas or by a conversation, something gets tweaked. Jiu Jitsu, we're constantly evolving. Blue belts learn things off black belts sometimes. Black belts mostly show purple belts, brown belt stuff. So we bring all our ideas together in a big stew and we take what we like and leave the rest. Yeah. No, I, I would fully agree with that. And that's I, I always compare it, like I love jujitsu and I always compare it to say uh sort of scientific kind of method. So like what I mean by that is like you treat the mat the mat's like your lab. 
So yeah. you, you, you get a guy who comes in, I kind of mentioned something like this earlier, you get a guy who comes in and he's he's like, oh, I've seen this technique on Instagram. Yeah. So that's like he's come in with a hypothesis or a thesis. And then you get his training partner who's like, okay, let's pressure test it. You know, and does it stand the test? And then what, if it stands, it holds up, it gets brought in. But you've got people like, because because people in jiu-jitsu are free to share their ideas, yeah. people are also free to criticise the ideas yes. and people. And then that's where the stuff that has merit and value holds up yeah. and the stuff that that that, um, that doesn't uh, survive the pressure cooker dies off, essentially. Yeah. And if you look at, say, certain martial arts uh, uh, that, that don't pressure test, they, they, the, the stuff that they are posting online of their techniques is an absolute fantasy. Yeah. And and that's because they don't exchange ideas in a real situation yeah. between them that that stuff, that stuff dies off. Like, and it's... it's Spleen it, shot 12. They, 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 <laughs> there you go. You get a guy who like... Like, Touch him here, he dies. <laughs> you, you get like uh, pages like selling the crab magard or other self defense techniques. Yeah. And like, I don't know about you, but I've never seen an opponent just throw and stop when he gets yeah, 30 no, digs no. back. No. But there's no pressure testing there, so it's like a cult yeah. where it's created, where it's like yeah. you can't question that inside it. And it's yeah, it's it's a uh, it's a crazy thing, but. I really can't wait for these uh, jiu-jitsu matches to open back up, man, and just get everyone back in and just let out some of that e- energy that's been building up and venting yeah. in the in the in the previous few months that that we've been closed down. But um, yeah, the exchange of ideas between John Danaher and Dean Lister, look at how that's revolutionised mm-hmm. the game. What was mm-hmm. that? Fifteen years ago, yeah, maybe. Yeah. And now the whole nogi game is 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 basically what all because of that one, yeah. one um. That and one it's program. not just a leg lock system. It it's goes into it's multifaceted you know what I mean you get to the back you attack the back so it's 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 people just think they're leg lockers nah Gordon submitted Kyle the weekend with a triangle triangle. so it's it's multifaceted you know what I mean they're not just leg lockers nah they're gonna get on your back and absolutely rape you yeah 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 yeah, absolutely destroy Mm -hmm. it it's like Mm -hmm. when I like as well like I remember what seeing John Danaher say his whole influence for the trapping of arms on the back came from BJ Penn yes. because BJ but he was like BJ was ridiculously flexible Yes. so he could just throw his leg up on the back he trapped the arm and, and then your, 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 your arm is trapped and he goes what if I have someone who's not flexible yes. so that whole thing developed because of that one idea of watching this guy here he took what he was doing and completely like would modify it into, the, into what's like an extremely complex yeah. you know intri- uh, integral part of the back system of trapping arms and how he rates everything in a hierarchy is just Mm. It's mind blown mm. because before, uh, before I kind of started seeing uh, the Danaher systems come in, it was like stuff didn't link together. It was like a jigsaw puzzle. Yes, it was just there on the floor, and it was all in bits. And it, it, it was like an a la carte menu nearly. Yeah. I was like a little bit of that, a little bit of this. Yeah. Your man teaches a good triangle. He yeah. teaches a good back take, and Jay's a hope he hit them, and that's about the height of it. Yeah, yeah. And he came in and. Uh, just the whole game changed mm. because of him, you know, uh, and everyone, uh, everyone is trying to be like them guys because they're dominating, they're dominating uh, every competition that they enter. Now, I know that Ethan and Nicky lost recently there on the weekend, but, you know, everyone, event, it, that's the beauty of sport. Eventually, you know. Ethan was robbed, robbed. I haven't seen robbed. the match, so I can't yeah, comment he on was it. robbed. But, uh, Nicky was beaten, but Ethan was robbed. Yeah, and I guarantee you, because. Nicky seemed very timid. Just real. Yeah, I, hear, I, think I, I think I seen Gordon mm. post, but here, like, them boys, they're gonna instead of crying or, or, or letting that break them, that's gonna mm. build them. That's gonna bring them. They're gonna guarantee them. Yeah, yeah, that's gonna that's gonna bring them back to that gym. Mm. Like, I can't let that happen again. And they're gonna mm. improve through that because they face the adversity of like losing it on a public forum, which is uh, which is never fun to be on the receiving end no. of, of no. a highlight loss or something like that, you know. But um, it's. It's uh, I think sport is one of the best universes yeah. of, of, of everything. That's why I can't wait to, to see this open back up because I've never, like, uh, like the whole, uh, the whole uh, thing of a gym and when you get guys coming in on the mat, like, nobody cares. Nobody gives a fuck. Nobody hope. cares. Nobody gives a fuck. No, it's one of the least. Yeah. Uh, racist places I've ever yeah. been in my life is is a is a jujitsu gym. Yeah. Like I, I just I, I really wish more people got into sport and stuff like that. I think that'll 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 really. And I better. saw Jake Shields probably posting some of the best stuff, you know, and 
he posted about I think it's time for me to get back working with inner city kids I was like fucking the, that's what we need we need more of that stuff dragging inner city kids that are probably going to drag, get dragged into breaking up shops or looting or stuff like that we need more of them into sport you know mm. what I mean sport is a uniform when you're on a team it doesn't matter what colour you are it doesn't matter but what matters is that you work hard and you support your team and you go for your best and if you lose do you know what you lost the, the only world. person that cares if you lose is you you know what I mean if you try your best that's all you can do I was watching the the Danaher interview on London Real and he was a he was around he says in the interview at the start of political correctness yeah. the movement on college campuses yeah. and he was saying it was it was one of the reasons why he left uh, yeah. academia yeah. was because he, he didn't like the idea of not being able to say what he thinks yeah. you know under fear of reprisal and his thing was like I was much happier to go to the jiu jitsu mats where nobody cares and everyone is just based on merit yeah. like there's no race skin nothing comes into it you're just ranked on merit and how good you are I, I remember about five years ago, this first came up on my radar when I was in New York and this there was a bit of a debate going on and this person was kind of talking about white privilege and she would kind of storm out and I was like, why privilege? Everyone in this room or that's been here is an immigrant and there was no fucking white privilege when these people came over on boats or wherever to and were accepted families. in to New York and they fucking worked hard on the shitty jobs, digging tunnels, roads, all that type of stuff and they worked their way up to that you can get paid to go to college. That's not white privilege. That's fucking hard work, you know? And America is open to anyone. Like, I was listening to another thing about, oh yeah, black people can't get to certain jobs and... Barack Obama was elected president of the country. There's no higher job than that. You know what I mean? First black president. And in his eight years, what did he really do? You know? Yeah. He probably didn't do enough. He could have done more, you know? But we could be talking about this forever, you know? But that's where it's at, unfortunately. I'll tell you, there's one thing that, that really... Uh, was when I've seen Irish people from council estates telling other Irish people from council estates, why Irish telling why Irish from council check your privilege. Fuck off. Are you, Fuck are you off. mental? <laughs> from, from, like, you're from Finglas, Ballymun, you know, Darndale, any yeah. of these, what privilege? Yeah. Like, like, good luck getting onto like Leinster Rugby or something like that if you're from one of these areas. Or imagine like, a, it's not, uh, it's not like the oppression, like say, you know, people might feel under systematic racism and stuff like that. But I know for a fact, if, you're, if an employer has two CVs in his hand and there's an address from BlackRock on one yeah. and an address from Ballymun at Darndale on the other, where's the privilege there? Yeah. Like, you know, so these, these kind of virtue warriors, yeah. they take a day off, man. Do you know, I, I was having a conversation with someone during the week about this, you know, and it's like, do you ever collect for a bonfire? You know, bit of teamwork. Yeah. yeah. We used to have fights with... We were in Rahini. We used to fight with guys from Kabarik all the time over pallets and, and wood. Yes, and it, collecting for a bonfire unifies people. Nobody gives a fuck what colour you are, but them cunts aren't taking our wood and we're going to fight to the death for it. And every area, like most of Charlestown, all the lads are from Ballymun. But when you go into Ballymun, it's like we're from Kiltry. You know what I mean? We're from Balbucha. We battered them cunts three weeks ago or four weeks ago. That's the way life is but is it racial no it's not racial it's just where we're from that's human beings but we're all human beings at the end of the day but mm. you could talk about that forever you know but yeah it's 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 i just wish the virtue signal warriors man i just wish to take a day off and relax mm. like you like posting up like if you're racist don't follow me Fuck you. It's like, how many races do you think are following you? Fuck do you. Know you. What I mean? Just like to give themselves a, a boost to look No one gives a fuck, Hunzo. <laughs> no one cares. Yeah, that's, that's, uh, that, that, it's crazy, man. I, I, I suppose we, we wrap it up at that. This is Danny Hall from me and Andre, and we've been drinking this all about kombucha. This stuff is made in Galway. Bought it myself. 
but it's really nice. And if any kombucha brands want to send out some stuff to us, send it to us. Yep. It's very tasty. <laughs> Cheers, John. No worries. That's it. Whopper. Whopper.